Welcome back. Remember, we're in the middle of this discussion on uh, differential GPS, and uh, I'm glad that we're spending some time with it. Differential GPS has been an enormous game changer for GPS. It really has taken the accuracy from 10 meters or so down to one meter or even half a meter, something like that. We did, however, flag that it's not perfect and that when the ray that comes from satellite to rover differs in some electromagnetic way from the ray that comes from satellite to reference, we do still get residual errors. The most worrisome of those are those due to ionosphere. So let's dig into that a little bit. Recall that last time I showed you this uh, map of the U.S., I have the same thing here. <clears throat> Just to reference you a little bit, here's the border between U.S. and Canada, something like that, and here's the border between U.S. and Mexico. So we have most of, uh, most of Mexico on here and just a little bit of southern Canada on here as well. Remember, too, that last time we kind of pretended to think about a baseline between a user and a reference, and I think I drew it uh, with approximately that length and cheerfully showed you that uh, that difference would lead to a delta I, a difference in the ionospheric delay of 30 uh, centimeters or so. But consider this day. Look, uh, first of all, here's a gradient of two meters, and then over here we have gradients of, sorry, not gradients, iono values, iono delays, of 26 meters. The one for the calm day, I think, went from something like three to five, three to six, over the entire breadth of the continental United States. Here we're talking, we're going from two to 26. So the overall variation in I is much, much greater on a storm day. Bear in mind, too, that this is I as seen vertically. If we were to look at a satellite lower in the sky, that value, be it of 2 or 26, would be multiplied by a factor that accounts for that obliquity, which would amplify the effect. Also, please now notice that if we were to take our little baseline and move it here into Ohio, the gradient is much, much greater. Uh, if we had the user here and the reference here, separated by the same distance that we've been using in, in our sketch, the gradient now goes from 2 to 20 almost. So that means 18 meters over, let's say, 200 kilometers, rather than 0 0.3 meters over 200 kilometers. And in fact, even greater gradients have been observed. Now, as you can foresee, this is a big worry and a big thing to think about for differential GPS, because it banks on the fact that these gradients are small, that the ray from satellite to reference suffers the same common mode errors as the ray from satellite to rover. Clearly, that would not be true here. Let's take a look at some actual data, give you a little bit more of a feeling for it. <clears throat> here, are, uh, here are results for a receiver in Ohio, right in the middle of those very, very steep gradients that you saw on the last page. And these are shown for some six hours on November 19th, 2003. Turns out November 19th, 2003 uh, is very close to some of the most famous ionospheric storms that we've seen globally. Now, this is still standalone, so we're not making any effort here to improve performance based on differential GPS. And notice that <clears throat> in uh, vertical, the yellow, and in purple, north, and in east, the light blue, we're suffering errors of tens of meters. So uh, the, the, the error is large compared to what we expect for standalone, 
but it's not very large. Notice also that there are some steps or discontinuities in the error traces as a function of time. Those steps occur to the rising or the setting of a satellite. So if a new satellite becomes visible over the horizon, we generally get a jump down. If a satellite sets, so our geometry matrix G becomes weaker, our dots become larger, we generally get a step up. Okay, so enough with this. This is just describing standalone uh, position errors for a non-storm day. If we look at the same day, non-storm day, differential GPS works very nicely. Uh, now we've used the same scale here, plus or minus 50 meters, and the errors now have become just almost straight lines. So very, very close to zero meters, very much in line with our error budget that predicted that the errors would be one meter or smaller. However, if we go to a storm day, even differential GPS has a tough time. And notice that it really has a tough time right during this period of time. It's exactly then that those steep gradients existed in the Ohio area, and GARF and GUST are two GPS receivers in Ohio, and what we're seeing here is the error in their relative position, as calculated by differential GPS, is a function of time, the same six hours, but now on November 20th, the, the day following, the November 19th was very, very stormy, it had a huge impact on even differential GPS performance we're looking at errors of tens of meters. So, this was a trouble, and the community responded to it in a very, very powerful way. Um, the feeling was that we really had to do something uh, different to treat the impact of the IONO. And all of that data I just showed you was for a single frequency from GPS. So only using the so-called L1 signal at 1575.42. Next time, when we get back together, we'll expand our discussion to what could we do if we had a dual frequency GPS or a dual frequency global navigation satellite system. And it turns out that that's really where the solution to ionospheric errors lie. So I look forward to that discussion with you.